Why is my fucking camera on an angle? And why am I too lazy to fix it? There's your song. This is a musical now. This is a musical channel. Welcome to Team Star Kid, Theo's Ghost Edition. That is the channel. All right, so this is a different kind of video, and by different, I just mean I haven't made a video talking about piercings before, even though I have a lot of them. I mean, by a lot, I mean like 11, which I feel like is more than the average person, but for like a pierced person, I'm still quite, quite new to the whole like having piercings things, getting piercings things. But I just realized the other day when I was like going through like my photos and stuff, that I have had my snake bites for a whole year. It's been a whole year yesterday. Yesterday was my year anniversary of getting snake bites. And I love my snake bites. I think they're great. And so I was like, you know what? I've had them for a year. Let's make a little video about them. Just a little video about them. So if you have ever been curious about my snake bites, here you go. Here's all the information you could ever want about them. So basically the story of how I got my snake bites, it's a very funny story. So I had gotten my septum pierced last August. And basically, when I first got my septum pierced, I got it pierced at 16 gauge. It is now pierced at 14 gauge. And basically, because I have a giant nose, when it was pierced at 16 gauge, you couldn't even fucking tell that I had a septum piercing. Like, it was way too small. I hated it. The balls were, like, literally, like, they would rub against, like, this part of the nose because the jewelry was so small because I have such a big nose and a big septum. So, basically, I didn't really like my septum jewelry. So, one night, I tried to change my septum jewelry and it didn't work because I have such a fat nose, big septum, I couldn't get it through. So, the next day, I had to go into a piercing shop to be like, hey, can you change my septum jewelry? And they were like, sorry, it closed overnight. And I was like, that's unsurprising. So then while I was in there, this is happening during the lunch break of my college, by the way. So literally I had classes and then we went on lunch for like an hour and I went to the piercing shop during the break and I had like a lesson in like 30 minutes. Basically I was there and I was like, oh, I just lost my septum piercing. I'm really sad. Hmm. Do you guys do snake bites? Can I just get snake bites to like console myself on like losing my septum piercing? And they were like, well, funny story, our apprentice is currently training in oral piercings, so not only can you get snake bites, but if you let the apprentice do it, you can get them for only 20 pounds. If, if you know anything about piercing prices, that's really good to get snake bites for that cheap. So I was like, um, hell yes, let's get snake bites. And so literally I came right out of the piercing room after they told me my septum closed, signed a consent form and went right back in and I got my snake bites pierced. Obviously you can tell the apprentice did a pretty good job. Like obviously like actually piercing something, I don't mind if it's an apprentice or not doing it because it's just going in. Um, and the piercing, the, pier the actual piercer was there watching her the whole time. So yeah, nothing really went wrong with the actual piercing. I just got it for like really cheap. So go me. So that's, and then I literally just went back to lesson with snake bites and a swollen lip and it hurt really bad. And that happened one year ago and they're still in my lip because I love them. In terms of pain, here's what I always tell people. My snake bites to me are the most painful piercing I have because what is going on with my camera? I hope it's in focus. I hope it's okay. It's putting a rectangle over my face, which it never does. I don't know what that means. Basically, in terms of like initial like piercing, like needle going through pain, it was like pretty okay. It was worse than lobes, it was worse than septum, it was worse than eyebrow, but it was a lot better than any of my cartilage ones. I would say out of all of my non-cartilage piercings, my snake bites were the worst, but obviously if you've ever had any of your cartilage pierced, you know that is absolutely hell. So in terms of like actual like piercing going through, like needle hitting the skin, the pain was like pretty okay. It's just, here's the thing. With cartilage, like my rook hurt horribly. It was horrible, awful pain, but I don't fucking move my rook. Like I don't move the rook. Like if I were to move my rook, I'd have to get my fingers and like physically shake it. So even though it hurt on the initial thing, on the initial pierce, it didn't really hurt that much afterwards. Whereas snake bites, not only did the initial piercing hurt, but you're always constantly moving your mouth. So I, it's not like the rook where like I get it pierced and then you leave it alone or like any other cartilage piercing where you get it pierced and then you leave it alone. You can't fucking leave your snake bites alone because you're always moving your mouth. So you're still constantly in pain through the whole healing process. At least I was. So I always say these were the most painful piercing, not only because like the actual pain of getting them pierced was like 
pretty like in the middle of the piercing scale could have been worse could have been a lot better but then also because the pain doesn't go away like my rook stopped hurting about like 30 minutes after i got it done my snake bites did not stop hurting for like a couple of weeks after i had them done and that's simply just because you're always moving your mouth you can't like just leave the piercing alone to heal when it's on your mouth so yeah it was hurting to talk it was hurting to eat it was hurting to like like, just, like, even, you, you don't even notice how much you move your mouth, like, in general, until your mouth starts hurting every time you move it. Like, you just move your mouth so much and you don't even realize. And basically, when I first got my stink bites, they looked like this. And so, if you're wondering, Theo, why is that jewelry so massive? It's because it needs room to swell. Any piercing you get, they should put in jewelry that is much too big for the piercing. That way, if it does swell, there's room for it. If you go to a piercer and they don't put in big jewelry on your initial piercing, they're not a very good piercer. So basically, because I had this, what happens when you have really long studs is that it's really difficult to eat because the back of the stud will keep getting caught on your teeth because there's so much stud, like it just like, like here's your lip, here's the stud, it just kind of goes like this. So like when you're trying to eat, if like this is my tooth, like obviously the stud's gonna keep getting caught in the tooth. So I was basically on a liquid diet for like two weeks. I eventually found ways of chewing, like it got easier and like had I kept in like really long studs, I'm sure I would have managed, but like obviously it looks ridiculous. So who's gonna keep in those long studs? And I found the best food is like really soft porridge, like make porridge, but then like make sure it's like really soft, like, like really soft. That's good because it's like really filling and it's also really easy to eat, so that's my tip for food. And the long studs were just horrible to have in anyways, because obviously they looked ridiculous. Like, I felt so stupid leaving the house with just, like, these two, like, nails sticking out of my face. Like, I'll show you pictures. Like, it looks ridiculous. And obviously it made it really difficult to eat, so I was on a liquid diet. And in terms of cleaning them, snake bites are pretty easy to clean, because basically your mouth, believe it or not, is a very clean place. Your mouth's pretty easy to keep clean. So basically, for the outside of the piercing, things, the surface bit that you can see, you use saline solution, which is, this is what you should be cleaning all your piercings with. Um, you can either get the saline solution that they sell in the piercing shops, which is usually way overpriced, it's literally just the same thing, it's just saline solution, or you can go to a pharmacy and you can go to the eye care section. Basically, yeah, it's stuff that you're meant to use for contact lenses, I don't wear contacts, if you wear contacts, great for you, you probably already have this. And so yeah, this is what you clean the outside of their snake bites with, and every other piercing that you have, pretty much. But then for the inside, it's just this mouthwash. Um, Corzadil. I don't know why this mouthwash specifically, this is the brand I was told to use, this is the brand I used. This, like, they wrote the name down on the little piercing aftercare sheet, so I went and I bought it, and so, yeah. I don't know why, but this is the mouthwash to use. They recommend that when you first, like, when it's, like, in the very initial healing, like, first couple of weeks, to water it down slightly, because it is, like, mouthwash. Like, if you've ever used mouthwash, you know, like, it can be a lot on a fresh wound, maybe. Um, so, yeah and just clean it with that, and that's how you keep your snake bites clean. But honestly, the inside of your mouth is a very, very clean place, especially if you're, like, brushing your teeth. You also do need to brush your teeth really well, especially the bottom teeth, especially when it's first healing, because, again, the studs can be rubbing against your gums and your teeth, so it's important to make sure that that's, like, really clean. And, yeah, the, the healing process for snake bites, it's brutal, it's awful, I hated it. Would I do it again? Absolutely, because I love my snake bites, but it is pretty quick. They do heal pretty quickly. Like, my cartilage piercings are still fucking healing. My snake bites are, like, completely chill. Like, it's, in terms of, like, healing piercings, snake bites are probably the quickest healing I've ever done in, like, just for any of my piercings. But it is a very brutal process, because it's like, you can't eat, you can't talk, everything hurts. Uh, you've got these stupid-ass studs sticking out your mouth. But then it's very worth it. So, I'm just gonna get into, like, the jewelry, the different jewelry that I've worn. As I mentioned, I had the super long studs in for two weeks, then they downsized them to still long studs that were kind of hanging out, and then at six weeks was when I finally downsized to normal size studs. But I obviously wanted rings in my lips, like, I was like, I need rings, put rings in them, and they were like, you need to wait for it to heal a bit more before you get rings in it, and I was just like, ugh, whatever. So after a little over two months, I decided to change them to horseshoes. I felt like they had healed enough. I'm pretty sure that was over like the time limit they gave me to when I could put in rings. Here's the thing. I love the way horseshoes look in snake bites. I would still have horseshoes, Ew, but 
but there's two problems. One, when they do move around a lot, it can be quite awkward with like eating certain things and getting them caught because obviously there's a gap. And the other thing is the balls fall off and I have lost several horseshoe balls when I had the horseshoes in my snake bites. So it just was a lot of a hassle. Even though I really liked the way that it looked, I was like, mm, maybe I shouldn't keep horseshoes in. So at four months of having the piercing, I got it changed to the ball closure rings, which is what are currently in my lips. So if you don't know how a ball closure ring works, basically it's a ring and a ball, and there's two little indents in this ball that make it stick to the ring. I could not get these out of my lips if you like held a gun to my head. I went to the piercer, she put them in, she really jammed them in there, could not get these out if I tried, which is really good because that means they're not gonna fall out. But also, like, if I ever had to take them out for something, I would need to go to a piercer to get them out because I could not get these out. But I obviously really like them, as you can see, because I have not changed them in the past, like, six months? Wait, if I- okay, wait, I got four months- eight months! These have been in my lips for eight months? That doesn't feel right. Anyways, for however long I've had these in, I really liked them. I think ball closure rings are good happy medium between horseshoes and rings because it's not just like a plain ring, there is the ball there, and also it stays in very nicely. I, I just like having ball closure rings in my lips. And obviously I much prefer over having rings than studs. I don't think I would ever go back to wearing studs like as the jewelry in my lips. I would maybe wear them for like if I was going to like a formal thing and they like told me like don't have rings in your lips, I would maybe then change out for studs. I do have some like nice studs with like like gems in them for an event if I needed to have like some more presentable jewelry in my lips. I do have that. Um but I really don't think cuz cuz like even when I was at like studs that were like to size they still rub against like your gums and teeth sometimes. Like not all the time, like the long studs do. But even just having studs in, it was irritating on my gums. Whereas obviously the rings, they do not touch my gums or teeth at all. I do chew on them sometimes, but the rings do not at all affect my gums or my teeth. I do not feel them like eroding at them at all. They don't touch. The only thing my rings touch is my lip. And at this point, I'm so used to them being there that it doesn't even feel like they're there. I think it would obviously feel weirder if I didn't have them in at this point. So yeah, that's my snake bites and what's been going on with the past year of having them in. I love them. They are by far my favorite piercing that I have, or piercings. There's two of them. I have debated maybe extending them out to shark bites. If you don't know, shark bites is when you have two on each side. I have thought about that. Maybe. It's just, it is a kind of a brutal healing process. And I would do it again. Like, if something happened to my snake bites, I would obviously go get them again. I have no plans on taking them out. I absolutely love them. I They're a great piercing. So yeah, if you've been thinking about getting snake bites, hopefully this is the sign that'll push you over the edge and you can finally go get snake bites because I think they're great. I think they're fantastic. They are, yeah, the piercing I re regret the least. If I had to only keep one piercing, I would keep my snake bites. If I had to take everything else out, I, I wouldn't take these out. These are staying in my lip. Hopefully you learned something from this video or just enjoyed my presence. I don't know why you're here. Look at that! I'm uploading consistently again. Well, okay, let's- I'm- I've uploaded two weeks in a row. Let's not get ahead of ourselves.